This entitled mum thinks she owns the school and has the principal wrapped around her little finger. This teacher's impossible mission is to stand up to this EM and make sure she doesn't get fired for something that she didn't do. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the show. In the cast, EM is entitled mother. EK, embarrassed kid. Me, 10 months on the job. TF, teacher and friend. D, dad of another student. P, principal, aka my boss, newly hired. Roughly three months on the job. MG, maintenance guy. Has been working in the school system for 25 plus years. A little background. I ran two to three book fairs a year as a way to raise money as the school has stopped providing funds for any new books, materials, etc. This story takes place rather early on in my career. During my second book fair that I had run, I just received a shipment and was pulling the cases. Big, huge metal cabinets that opened to the display cases during the sale. Into the library chatting with the delivery guy. I sign the delivery papers and wish him a good weekend. I did not realize until my seventh book fair that he was hardcore flirting. But that's a different thread. So, kids milling about all excited because they don't know the book fair is opening Monday and the cases are here and it's Friday afternoon, etc. Note that most of this happened in a very short 10 minute span. Note EM is on her phone throughout the entire exchange, texting or typing, between every word and glancing up. Teacher and friend EM and EK are coming towards me as I push the last of the cases into the library so that I can start the setup. TF has a look of disdain on her face and this was understandable as this EM and EK are well known and not all that well liked for a variety of reasons. Hey OP, EK and her mom were wondering if you could get in early to see the book fair since they won't be here Monday and I was explaining to them that you aren't open yet and that the book fair would be open all next week, not just Monday, but EM looking at her phone. I can talk for myself Miss TF. Okay, sorry, steps back and crosses her arms. She basically had it with the parent and at this point we'd only been in that school for two months. EM huffs looking at her phone. So anyways, me and DK need to see the book fair today because we won't be here Monday. So can we just look really quick and we'll pick out what we want and then pay you next week when we get back? I'm sorry but the book fair won't be open or even ready to look at until Monday. I just got the cases in boxes and haven't even had the chance to get them open, let alone the fair set up. But we will be open all of next week so you can come see us Tuesday. EM still looking at her phone. That won't work for us. We need to see it all now. She, EK, wants to see it before all the good stuff is gone. I drop down to EK's level to talk to her since EM is obviously not going to be much help. Hey EK, remember how I came to your class and talked to you guys about what the book fair was and the rules for the book fair? Yeah. Okay, do you remember me telling you when it would be open and that the only times that anyone could shop was when we were open or your class was coming down for their private shopping time? Yeah, but my mom says that we can go anytime and that those rules are just so that you don't have to do extra work. I smile and stand back up. I'm sorry EM, but you both will have to wait until the book fair is open. And it is not open right now. It will open Monday at 7.30am. EM still on the phone. Um, that doesn't work for me. She then proceeds to try to push past me and into the library, grabbing her EK by the arm and dragging her with her. At this point in my life I was 100 pounds heavier, standing at 5'5 and 272 pounds. Um, no, block store. TF is standing there, mouth gaping, arms down at her sides in sheer disbelief, but is clearly at a loss as to what to do, so does nothing. EM still trying to shove me out the way and get into the library. Move the frick out of my way! My kid wants a freaking book! Me frantically trying to make eye contact with TF to no avail, finally I yell to get her attention. TF, can you please go get someone to help me? TF comes to and goes sprinting across the yard to the front office, which is maybe 100 yards from my door, and goes in. Frick you, you fat frickin' bee! Let me the frick in! EM, I cannot let you in and you need to calm down. You are hurting my arm and you're making quite the scene. I don't give a frick, you whale! Finally, another parent steps in to help. Now this dad is maybe an inch or two taller than me, but all muscle and no neck. 
He puts his arm between me and her, wrapping it around her and pulling her back. I'm finally able to get the door closed, unfortunately locking my keys inside. And at least that is no longer an issue to deal with. At this point, she is beyond ticked and very verbal to both me and him. She is calling us names, swinging at us, and in general, in a very bad mood. Lady, you need to calm the frick down. Frick you! At this point, I have stepped away from the door, knowing that there is no way she can get in. It is a steel door that is closed and locked, trying to get out of her line of fire. She is yanking on the handle, trying to get it open. Parents and students staring at her. Her daughter is now crying, begging her mother to stop saying mean things and to stop that she can just wait until next week. I see TF coming across the lawn with our maintenance guy. Older, not much help, but really great and gruff guy. And our principal, useless woman. Lady, just calm down. Your little girl is crying and you're acting like a toddler throwing a tantrum. I can do whatever the frick I want. This bee shoved me out of her way, slammed the door in my hand, and refuses to let me in. And then she started freaking kicking me. At this point, TF and D all start laughing because they know me. And they know I would never, never do any of that stuff. Our lovely principal, on the other hand. OP, you can't treat a parent that way. Why didn't you just let her in? Yeah, why the frick can't you just let me in? All I want to do is let my kid look because she wouldn't be here on Monday. She turns to P. And this B won't let us in. Whoa, wait a second. Let me explain what's going on. Shut the frick up, whale. Just do what she says. At this point, I know that I'm getting very close to losing it. I have, undiagnosed at the time, bipolar, ADHD, OCD, and severe anxiety. Add in that I am extremely introverted, and this job is the one thing that has slowly been working to bring me out of it. Literally. My dream job working in a library with kids. I'm on the brink of tears. I'm shaking, and my rage is slowly rising to the surface. OP, just open the library and we can discuss this while EM and EK look around. If looks could kill, I would be in jail. P, I cannot let anyone into the library to look around when it has not been set up. I just got the cases in. Nothing has been moved to even be able to open them. And EM said that EK would be gone Monday, not all of the next week. And I said that she'll be gone next week. All of it. She won't be here at all. We have to go to her grandpa's funeral, so she won't be here. This right here should have been my cue to never step foot on a school campus again. The fact that parents can pull this entitled crap and get what they want ticks me off to no end. EK started wailing against her mother over and over. Did grandpa really die? <laughs> Did he? OP, let us in now. I can't. My keys are locked in. I see our maintenance guy's arm moving by his keys, but I'm not sure what he is doing. Principal to our maintenance guy. Let us in now. Now this guy is older and gruff, but one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. He was always ready to help however he could. Sorry, can't do that. Principal, a look of murder crosses her face. And why not? Misplaced my keys earlier. He smiles. No idea where they are. D, T, F, M, G, and I all have to refrain from laughing. I'm so sorry, EM. We will make sure that EK gets a book. I promise. And it will be at no cost to you. Um, you cannot do that. That is not how those things work. Every penny and item must be accounted for. At that statement, my mind starts flying in 50 directions. QOCD and anxiety. My shaking gets worse and I step back, putting my back against the door. We have a huge audience at this point. Students, parents. Done right she will, and not one of those cheap ones. A hardback one. One of the good ones. She turns to me. See what happens when you treat people like crap? You get crapped on. Big smile. D who seems to be just as agitated as I am, but as sure of himself as EM is, steps up to her, getting about six inches from her body slash face. I happen to have seen this whole incident play out, ma'am. You have been nothing but rude to this young lady, treating her like dog crap. And now you think that you're going to get what you wanted in the first place because you threw a tantrum to get your way? And because P said so? I may not be a Wall Street businessman, but that is not how these things work. Turns to me. Are they OP? Nope. D turns back to EP. So you need to get back on your high horse and trot back home. Screw you. I'm calling the police. D laughs. The only person here that is a person and acting like one is P. 
She grabs EK and starts to walk away on her phone. Principal to me, Why couldn't you just let her in? Me, shaking like a leaf. It was a safety issue. It's a small library. Six massive metal cases are right inside the doorway. Stuff is everywhere because I was trying to get what I could set up before the cases got here. They could have tripped on something or bumped a case and had one of the boxes on top fall into them. It's a safety thing. And she said that they were only going to be gone Monday. I went over the rules with EK and her class, just like I did all of the classes and students. I was very polite in the beginning. You can ask TF and D. She was pushy and demanding something that I could not offer. I won't be responsible for anyone getting hurt. And I cannot give any books for free. Everything is accounted for, and anything missing comes from my pocket. I'm not paying for EK to get a book just because her mum feels like she is special and should get special treatment. You should have assessed the full situation before jumping in and making promises. Crap. I don't do stuff just to cause problems. And we can't just let her look around and maybe open the cases for her? First, safety. Second, you'd want to do that with how she has treated one of your employees? And last, are you paying for the book? Principal rests her face in her palm and sighs. Okay, um... With EM stepping off, a lot of the audience cleared out, as it was Friday afternoon, and the school had let out 20 plus minutes prior at this point. MG excused himself, snickering as he went. TF scuttled off to her classroom, and EK is sitting on the grass, plucking a blade at a time, just waiting for her mother to be done. I am wishing kids a good weekend, and answering excited questions about the book fair, making sure to mention that we open Monday at 7.30am, and that we'll be open all week, etc. EM starts to walk back over, her phone safely back in her hands. EM texting, or who knows. So I've just got off the phone with the police, and they say that I can push, yes push, charges against you for what you did. D laughs a good old belly laugh. Hold on a minute, grabs his cell and punches a few numbers. D here, explains the situation, asks if there have been any calls relating. There had, one. Okay, thank you. So yes, this mother did in fact call 911, red faced laughing, <laughs> and how dispatch turns to EM, told you not to waste 911's time ever again with a call of that nature. And I, as a cop, would have to agree. EM turns beet red and her mouth drops open. The fact that you called 911 to try and get your way in this situation tells me that I'm dealing with a child throwing a tantrum. So let me dumb this down for you. You're not getting into the book fair early. Your kid is not getting a free book. Now with all the authority invested in me as a freaking cop, get the freak off the school grounds now. EM grabs EK and stomps off without another word. I spend a few minutes thanking him for his help and chatting with him while he waits for his kid. P takes the opportunity to sulk off. D's kiddo shows up and is super excited for the book fair, asking all kinds of questions, which I happily answer. Then I see MG slowly sauntering back my way. Would you like me to get you back in now so that you can get back to what you were doing? Smiles. Yes, please. Nice magic trick, by the way. MG jokingly. In another life, I'd like to think that I was a magician. We all laugh. D and his kiddo wish me a good weekend and head off. MG opens the door for me and I go in to my sanctuary. I drop to the floor against the door and do some crazy laugh, cry, sob shaking thing for a few minutes. Once I calm down, I got up and began to get my library ready for the book fair. D ends up popping in several times throughout that next week checking in to make sure that EM hasn't tried to give me any problems. P never mentions the situation again, and I never see EM again, except for glances occasionally across the yard when she picks up EK. The last day of the book fair, the next Friday, EK comes in with $20 and looks around for a while. I'm very busy as it's the last day and almost closing time, so I don't have time to go over and talk to her. I ask one of my older kiddos to close the door and lock it, since it is closing time. Eventually, the only people left are me, EK, and another student. EK comes up to the register with a $1 bargain book and hands it to me. I chat with her about her day as I get her rung up and tell her a little bit about the book. Miss Opie, um, I'm really sorry. Oh, sweets, you don't have anything to be sorry for. In effort to get away from the possible conversation, I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. EK with tears in her eyes. My dad says my mom thinks she is better than other people. 
and that she does that stuff to show it. I'm sorry she was mean to you and called you names and lied. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's okay. Sometimes mummies have bad days and do things they don't mean to. I am okay and you are okay. And that's what matters. EK smiles. Can mummies have a lot of bad days? <laughs> yes. Yes they can. Being a mummy is hard work. There is a lot to do and sometimes we worry and that makes things worse. I'm still sorry that she was mean to you. I think you are great. I love the stories you read to us. I continued this back and forth conversation about books and the library for a few minutes while I got the other kiddo checked out. I let them both know that it was time to close and that they had to leave. EK as she leaves, me holding the door open for her. Next time there's a book fair, I'm not gonna tell my mommy about it. I'll tell my dad and he'll give me money and we won't tell mommy. Maybe sometimes that's the best plan is to avoid the conflict entirely. I think there is some wisdom in the conversation held at the end, where it's like, you know, sometimes mummies do things they don't mean to do. It's really complicated because one sense, yes, we all do things we don't mean to do and don't want to do, but we end up hurting other people, sometimes the people who are closest to us that we mean to love. On the other hand, sometimes there are people who have a continual repetition of bad behavior and no intention to change that behavior. One of the hardest things you're gonna have to do in your life is trying to discern with those closest to you who are the ones that are genuinely trying to change and who are those that despite what they say are never going to change and inevitably continue to hurt you. The choice you have to make then is how are you going to respond to that? There's no right or wrong answer, only trade-offs. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.